the latest tech. People love iPhone, and it's an important part of our daily lives. Interviews. We see far too many products that come on the market that you look at that you say, was a blind person ever even consulted for something like this? Accessibility. The most interesting thing over the last couple of years is the emphasis on gaming uh, and accessibility. This is Double Tap TV. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the program. I am Stephen Scott. And I am Mark of Lalo. Stephen, we've got an exciting show lined up. And you know what? We're actually officially in the home stretch, the countdown to the end of this season of Double Tap TV. What, already? How on, haven't we just begun this? No, 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 not even close. This is actually episode 541. Let me give you some behind the scenes information here, in case you're wondering. Uh, so this is episode 541 of Double Tap TV, which means mm -hmm. episode 41 of our fifth season of this show. And every season has 44 episodes. Wow, that must be some kind of milestone, right? I, I wouldn't necessarily call it a milestone. Maybe when we hit like 500, I'll let you know, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, deal. Uh, but Mark, I want to talk about Google. I know that's unusual for me, but specifically Google I.O. Because this year, uh, you know, Google made some really interesting announcements at their annual developers conference. And we haven't actually talked about them and their role in artificial intelligence yet. Yeah, definitely. And you know what, Stephen? A lot happened to Google I.O. this year, and, and, and you were going to bring it up. So I actually put together a little something to walk us through all the announcements from this year's conference. Every year in Mountain View, California, Google invites people to Shoreline Amphitheater to talk about what's coming next. And this year, Stephen, was no different. Every spring for the past 15 years, developers and press descend on Mountain View, California to hear what Google has to announce at their annual developers conference they call Google I.O. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Google I.O. This year, as CEO Sundar Pichai stepped on the stage at Shoreline Amphitheater, not much was left for surprise. The company already leaked their folding phone, the Pixel Fold, their take on the folding smartphone, and the Pixel 7a was in the hands of media under embargo until its official announcement. Back to those in a moment. The keynote kicked off with the main event, artificial intelligence. The CEO quickly demonstrated how AI will tie into Google's biggest workplace products, Gmail, Maps, and Photos. Gmail will get the ability to generate emails from single questions, a feature called AI Writing Assistance, which they demonstrated in the first moments of the I.O. keynote. We are taking the next step in Gmail with Help Me Write. Let's say you got this email that your flight was canceled. The airline has sent a voucher, but what you really want is a full refund. You could reply and use Help Me Write. Just type in the prompt of what you want, an email to ask for a full refund, hit create, and a full draft appears. It conveniently pulled in flight details from the previous email. Moving on to Maps, Google demonstrated some major AI enhancements that take things to a whole new level. Google Maps provides 20 billion kilometers of directions every day. That's a lot of trips. Imagine if you could see your whole trip in advance. With immersive view for routes, now you can, whether you're walking, cycling, or driving. Let me show you what I mean. Say I'm in New York City, and I want to go on a bike ride. Maps has given me a couple of options close to where I am. I like the one on the waterfront, so let's go with that. Looks scenic, and I want to get a feel for it first. Click on Immersive View for Routes, and it's an entirely new way to look at my journey. I can zoom in to get an incredible bird's eye view of the ride, and, and as we turn, we get onto a great bike path. And finally, in photos, They've elaborated on the company's Magic Eraser tool, which uses AI to remove objects. They announced Magic Editor, which lets you move items in a photo, remove pesky things that you might have forgotten, like that badge you were wearing, or relight the sky and let the rest of the photo follow suit. All features they also demonstrated in the first few minutes of the keynote. This is a great photo, but as a parent, you always want your kid at the center of it all. They put up a picture of a boy holding balloons, but he's sitting on a bench off center. And it looks like the balloons got cut off in this one. So you can go ahead and reposition the birthday boy. Magic editor automatically recreates parts of the bench and balloons that were not captured in the original shot. As a finishing touch, you can punch up the sky, 
It changes the lighting in the rest of the photo so the edit feels consistent. It's truly magical. Not entirely unexpected, Google's AI language model, BARD, its competitor to ChatGPT, and Microsoft's Copilot will get major enhancements across the board. For example, using Google Lens, BARD can actually see photos and determine what's in them. So if you wanted to have fun with your pets, you could. Google VP Tissue Hisayo. So if you're looking to have some fun with your fur babies, you might upload an image and ask Bard to write a funny caption about these two. It lends a text that this is a photo of a goofy German Shepherd and a Golden Retriever. And then Bard uses that to create some funny captions. While AI took up the majority of the keynote, the company finally pivoted to talk about new hardware with the announcement of the new Pixel 7a. Google SVP Rick Osterloh. We're completely upgrading everything you love about our A-Series with the gorgeous new Pixel 7a. Starting at under 500 US dollars, this truly affordable Pixel phone brings many flagship features to a more attainable level. Pro-level camera, fast onboard processing, improved battery life, and of course support for everything Google announced. The device everybody wanted to know more about was also on show, the Pixel Fold. The folding phone features a large 5.8 inch screen on the front, but then opens up to display a 7.6 inch diagonal screen that really does make things pop. Overall, the device is the thinnest in its class, but with a price point of $1,800 US, it may be a pretty stiff choice for people on a budget. Finally, on the device side of things, Google unveiled a new tablet called the Pixel Tablet, which is its first tablet actually made by Google. It will be available for only $499 US dollars and includes a magnetic speaker dock when it launches. On the accessibility front, Braille tablets were added in 38 languages in Android. Upcoming features in TalkBack 14 include text selection, moving the cursor by character, word, and line while editing text, plus support for cut, copy, and paste using new gestures. A new reading mode has been added, plus a new feature called non-linear font scaling. This allows the font to increase up to 200%, which means that already large text won't increase at a rate of small text, so there'll be less potential for text to be cut off when increasing in font size. In hearing accessibility, there are improvements across many hearing products in Android 14. Interacting with hearing aids becomes more intuitive, all the way from setup until use. Notifications will become more helpful. In addition to vibration and sound, you can turn on flash notifications with the screen or the camera, a feature that's pretty useful for anybody who misses notifications. Finally, live captions. This will caption any audio on the device in real time. No internet connection required. This means listening to a podcast, watching YouTube videos, or even talking to someone on the phone. Plus, you can even respond to a caller with text and let the phone speak for you. While we'll surely learn more as developers dive in, this has been a snapshot of the 2023 edition of Google I.O. So that's a lot in one chunk there, and we're going to break it down a bit for you. Uh, Plus Mark has one of the devices Google announced ready to show off. So don't go anywhere. This is Double Tap TV. You're watching Double Tap TV. Get involved. Follow us at Double Tap On Air or email us feedback at doubletaponair.com. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. Back on Double Tap TV, talking all things Google I.O., their annual developers conference, and all the announcements from this year's event, Stephen. Yeah, and you know, Mark, what I love about these events, it's always just the fanfare of what they announce on stage, but the takeaways and the things we find out about after, that's really the interesting bits. Yeah, definitely, because they dive into all these sessions for like a whole day, if not a week, and they talk about all the different things like accessibility and just how we're going to see AI you know, play a role in different things. But I wanted to touch upon some of the Android 14 features because... While they did talk about some of these features, they didn't really showcase them on stage, which I found was kind of interesting. They really focused things on AI off the top. They talked about the hardware more than they did about the software. And this is a developer's event. You'd think they'd talk more about some of these features. They didn't even give us like a code name or anything for Android 14. No, that's right. I mean, it didn't even really mention it at all, even by name in itself, which was kind of weird because, you know, if you go to or watch any event, say, for example, a Microsoft event or an Apple event, they will often talk about these things up front. So Apple will always talk about what's new in the latest iOS version or iPadOS or watchOS. 
uh, you, you get used to hearing about that and it would be really weird if they didn't. And generally IO they do. Of course, the focus this year was really on artificial intelligence, which we'll talk about. So we were talking more about features within the operating system rather than the operating system themselves, which says there's maybe not much to come in Android 14. Yeah, maybe it's maybe it's kind of like an iterative update, you know, and something that's just not yeah. as significant. So so a couple of things, you know, this like things we're not even going to talk about. For example, emoji wallpaper. So you can actually pick a whole bunch of emojis and make that into your wallpaper. Do we give that more than the 10 seconds I just gave it? I really don't think you should give it any more than the, any words more than that. Emoji wallpaper would have been enough for me. <laughs> Unknown tracker alerts. <laughs> this is an interesting one because yeah. one of the things they did talk about on stage was how they were incorporating third-party companies like Tile um, and even AirTag tracking. And the interesting thing about that and what everybody's talking about after the fact is that they must have been working with Apple in order to support this feature. And this is not something they normally go out and talk about and say, hey, we worked with uh, our biggest competitor out there on this new feature, but it is something that they definitely did work with Apple about. And funny enough, even newer Apple products, they released the new Beats Studio Buds headphones a couple of weeks back, and they actually announced in their promos it supports Apple and Google's Find My. So that's an interesting feature that I think is going to be maybe at the butt of a little relationship we might see where these two might work together. Yeah, I mean, I've said this before. Around accessibility, you tend to find the big companies, Google, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, they all work together under the brand of accessibility because they know that it benefits everybody. So it becomes less about competition. And I kind of think when it comes to something like tracker alerts, I guess this is kind of in the same idea, right? We've all read the stories and the horror stories about you know people having these tags slipped into their bag and suddenly they don't realize that they're carrying around a tracker. Now, you don't really want a situation, and I don't think any company that makes these devices really wants the excuse of someone having one of these the actual device that they're holding in their hand, their smartphone. So no one really wants to be uh, responsible for that, shall we say. <laughs> so if all companies work together on this, then it makes a lot of sense. And it does make a lot of sense. And it might make people a lot safer. And it will also increase the uh, the chance of finding these trackers, not just if someone was to slip one into your bag, but actually find the ones attached to your own keys. And the summary here really is, is that Google has launched their own support for third-party tracking devices, which means that if it detects, uh, you know, a tile or an Apple AirTag, it will report that back not only to you, but it'll actually help the ecosystem of tracking these devices grow to all those Android devices out there, which in itself is probably an issue that we may want to focus on in a year or two now. Uh, when we hear some other stories from but it is a very very cool ecosystem of of tracking devices that is extremely helpful i mean i track my luggage all the time now um i just for the fun of it throw it in packages that i send to people to see where it's going to go <laughs> when i have to send equipment to repair or back i do throw a tracker in there so i can make sure it gets from a point a to point b and i've actually found equipment and a road case that ups said they lost Wow. So it, it does come in heavy. Yeah, and, and that's the great thing, right? I mean, you know, how many times have we sent back a parcel or, you know, we've sent something between ourselves? Interestingly, there's a great little, almost like secret network of um, logistics uh, for blind people that goes on around the world. And in different parts of the world, it has different names. Here in the UK, it's called Articles for the Blind. And you can take a parcel with pretty much anything in it, um, as long as it has something in there relevant to blind people. So basically, you stick some braille and a bit of paper, and you know you stick that note inside the, uh, the box, and off it goes. And you can send it for free anywhere in the world. Oh, wow. But there is a bit of a catch in that you can't put insurance on it and you can't track it. Well, with an air tag, you can. So even if it does get lost, you'll know where it ended up. So, you know, upside, downside, I guess. One of the other features that uh, they announced on stage and I talked about in that package in the earlier segment was Magic Compose in Gmail, where it allows you to really be, be an assistant to writing those emails we saw a demonstration on stage about writing an email to an airline complaining about a refund that you wanted. Well, that is going to come, obviously, to Android 14 and be built in to the Gmail app, which is really, really cool. And that's actually the first real sign of AI rearing its ugly head or its its its, its great head uh, in Android 14. That's right. And, and oftentimes, these kind of features are sometimes 
pitched at people who have cognitive issues. But I think there's lots of us out there who sometimes just don't know the right words to say about something or they don't know the right way to put it. So, for example, say you have to send an email to someone and you're particularly annoyed, but you don't want the email to come across that way. Having something like this enables you to put down your thoughts, essentially write the worst email you can think of, and then ask it to do it in a nice way. And that would be cool, right? And uh, yeah, I think, I think that's gonna help a lot of people. There's a lot of us who, you know, struggle just to come up with the right words and things. And that's got nothing to do with anything other than just sometimes you just can't think of the right words. This can help. So it makes things nicer, it makes the tone better. Yeah, I mean, in some, in some ways it's a little bit manipulative and we have to see what that looks like in reality. But I think these tools are they're definitely built to help. Stephen, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to go hands-on with some hardware and talk about the Pixel Fold and the tablet. Can't get enough Double Tap TV? Subscribe to the podcast and get your fill of Double Tap every day. Visit DoubleTapOnAir.com and follow us now. Double Tap TV will be right back. You're watching Double Tap TV. And we're back on Double Tap TV, recapping Google I.O. this year. Uh, Mark, they announced several pieces of new hardware this year, including the Pixel Fold, the Pixel 7a, and the Pixel Tablet. So let's start off with the Fold. What do we know about that? Well, you know, first off, it's the folding device. I think the name might have given that away. So you've got a screen on the front and on the inside. Now, the screen on the front is 5.8 inches, so it's roughly the same size as a modern-day iPhone. When you open it up, it, it, it displays this beautiful 7.6 inch screen with a super solid OLED uh, image and a beautiful hinge. And I say beautiful, it's because it, it's really able to hold that device open in various stages. Now, why is that important for a hinge? Well, you can position it in different ways that you want. You can fold it in half, for example, and rest it on a table for calls, or you can use the bottom screen as a keyboard while the top is being, you know, a document, so you can actually use it for work and uh, other fun things like that. You know, video chats, you don't have to worry about where am I gonna prop up this device. Now, the camera is on the back, just like other Pixel devices. It's got a little bit of a bump across the back, and it features three cameras just like any flagship Pixel device. All the pro level features you can expect, a 48 megapixel main camera, a 10.8 megapixel telephoto lens, and a 10.8 megapixel ultra wide camera as well. And you know what, Stephen, you know, it's interesting because the Pixel tablet is actually a new device as well. And it's the first time we're seeing a Google created tablet, right? That's right. Uh, the tablet is here and some would argue back because they did do this a while ago, but this is it back in Pixel form. and. And uh, like the Fold, it's coming this summer and fall. Now, it's got a 10.9-inch screen, which is going to be beautiful, I'm sure. Uh, Google's own Tensor processor in there. And it will be available in various storage capacities, 128 gig or 256 gig versions. Now, you will also expect it to have things like stereo speakers. It'll have Bluetooth. It'll come with Wi-Fi, uh, an 8-megapixel camera as well, everything you would expect from a modern-day tablet. And at launch, when it comes, uh, you'll get a speaker dock as well, which connects magnetically. And all of that for under 650 Canadian dollars. Quite impressive. But Mark, you've got the other device that I think more people will be interested in overall, and that is the Pixel 7a. Yeah, I do. You know what? This is a phone that I, I received a, a couple days before Google I.O. I'm holding it up to the screen now. It's you know, again, it's not the biggest device in the world. It's the same size as probably the Pixel Fold when it's closed. It's got a really nice front-facing 6.1-inch screen that's OLED, so it's super bright, and that's one of the features they're touting on this device is it's super bright for daylight viewing. Um, a nice modern design on the sides. You've got a brushed aluminum design, so it's not going to get those fingerprints that are stuck on there. On the back, it's got like a matte color, but a glossy finish, and that's because of the Gorilla Glass that's on there as well. It's got that camera strip that Pixels are now known for that go across the entire device and actually blend into that brushed aluminum siding. It's got two cameras and the flash on this device, whereas the new flagships have the three camera design, which is actually, uh, you know, kind of interesting. But because of all the software features, which is really what makes this phone a little bit different, Stephen, um, it takes advantage of the cameras a little bit differently. So I talked about the adaptive brightness for the brighter screen. It's got a new recorder app that can actually detect people with speaker labels. So when you record a conversation between two people, it'll actually detect that it's two different voices. There's text chat with humans. So if you've got a disability that you can't use your voice, you can type in the text and it'll read it back.
back to the other person on the other end. There's clear calling to isolate the person on the other end. Normally we isolate our own environment when we're using headphones. Now you can actually isolate the person on the other end of the call. Uh, better voice message transcription, which is great. There's a super res zoom for the camera. Real tone, which allows you to really see the different tones of people's skin or just images and colors. Photo on blur is a feature that's coming to this device. And all of this available, Stephen, for only 629 Canadian dollars, which is really something that I, I wanna focus on because you could spend $2,000 when the Pixel 7 Pro, for example, came out, or you could wait a couple months and get this for under $700 and you get a flagship quality device at a fraction of the price, which is absolutely insane, but something that it is, it's now become a pattern for Google to announce at these uh, developers' conferences. Yeah, and when you think if you knock $50 off that, you're getting an iPhone SE from Apple, which doesn't have all the fancy features that the iPhone, say, 14 has. Uh, you know, you still get Touch ID on there. You don't have Face ID for Face Unlock. You don't have uh, a lot of the uh, newer fancy features like, you know, LiDAR scanners and fancy cameras. It's all pretty basic on the iPhone SE. Z lineup. So your comparison is interesting. And you know, that price is going to attract a lot of people. If you're buying an Android device today, I think the Pixel 7a is the one to buy, to be honest. I mean, it has everything in it. Steven, thank you for covering Google I.O. Obviously, lots more to talk about as we find out more about Android 14. This has been an episode of Double Tap TV, episode number, what did I say, 541? Yeah. Uh, only a couple more to go and a very, very cool an exciting announcement about the future of this program coming up towards the end of the season. So do keep tuned in and we will see you on the next episode of Double Tap TV. Thanks for watching Double Tap. Send us your feedback to feedback at doubletaponair.com. Leave us a voicemail at 1-877-803-4567. Hosted by Marco Flalo in Montreal and Stephen Scott in Glasgow. Producer Marco Flalo. Editing and graphics Jordan Steves. Voiceover Anna Vicino. Social media Wendy Kaufman. Integrated described video specialist M. Williams. Supervising producer Michelle Michelle Dudas, Manager Programming AMI-TV, Lizanne Gagné. Director, Content Development and Production, Kara Nye. VP, Content Development and Operations, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Copyright 2023, Accessible Media, Inc. An AMI original production.